Hi everyone, this is Ashley Davis. I'm the developer of DataForge Notebook and author of the book Data Wrangling with JavaScript. This video is a getting started guide for DataForge Notebook. It's designed for beginners, so it's quite basic, and we're not going to get into too many details. So what exactly is DataForge Notebook? DataForge Notebook is a desktop application available for Windows, Mac OS and Linux. It is a general purpose code evaluator for notebook style coding in JavaScript. I like to think of it as a REPL on steroids. Personally, I use DataForge Notebook prototyping JavaScript code and working with data. I do a lot of my data related work in DataForge Notebook, including data exploration, cleanup, analysis, visualization, and transformation. I use DataForge Notebook a lot with DataForge, and that's why it has DataForge in the name. But it's not strictly tied to DataForge, and in fact, you can write any JavaScript code you want, and you can use any NPM modules you want with DataForge Notebook. If you don't yet have your hands on DataForge Notebook and would like to register your interest, please visit www.dataforgenotebook.com. So now let me explain what is DataForge. DataForge is my open source code library for working with data in JavaScript. I created DataForge several years ago because there wasn't anything like this around back then. Previously, when working with data, I'd used Python and Pandas, and when using c -sharp, I'd used Microsoft Link. My experience with both Pandas and Link has fed into DataForge. So now, what's this thing called NPM? I mentioned NPM a moment ago, and you might be wondering what that is. NPM is the package manager for Node.js. It allows you to install a wide variety of third-party code that will help you accomplish all manner of coding tasks. This is the NPM web page, and we can use this to search for useful code and modules. You can see that I can get to DataForge through NPM. In a moment, I'll show you an example of using NPM in DataForge Notebook. So it's possible you're also wondering what is Node.js. Quite simply, it is used to run JavaScript code. It's popularly used for building servers and backends, but we can also use it for creating command line tools for processing and visualizing data. DataForge Notebook contains an embedded version of Node.js, which it uses to evaluate your JavaScript code. When you finish prototyping your code in DataForge Notebook, you can then export it to run directly on Node.js. In this way, you can kickstart uh, your proper professional applications using DataForge Notebook, and then later run them in a real production Node.js environment. Okay, so now it's time for an overview of the DataForge Notebook basic. This is the default notebook. It's the notebook you see the first time you run DataForge Notebook. The default notebook has a markdown cell. Markdown is a format for creating documentation. We can use it to document ourselves. I can click in the cell to edit the text here. To finish editing the markdown cell, I just have to remove the focus from it. I'll do that now by selecting the code cell that's below the markdown cell. Here we can type the JavaScript code that we'd like to evaluate. When I'm ready to run the code, I click the run button next to the cell. When we run a code cell in DataForge Notebook, under the hood, it's actually using the embedded version of Node.js. It uses that to evaluate the code and produce the output. Any output that is generated by a code cell is displayed after the code cell. As you have just seen, we can use the function console.log to produce textual output from a cell. Console.log is just an ordinary JavaScript function. It normally comes with JavaScript and you can normally use it in Node.js and, and in web browsers. Um, so it's not particularly special to DataForge Notebook. However, we do have a special output function we can use called display. We can use the display function to output and visualize structured data. I'm gonna use it here to visualize a JavaScript array. As you can see, the display function has special treatment for visualizing JavaScript arrays. And in fact, it has special treatment for many different types of JavaScript data. We can use it to display JavaScript objects, tabular data. We can use it to plot charts. And there's more functionality coming in future versions of DataForge Notebook. I'll show you examples of visualizing these types of data in a moment. In DataForge Notebook, as with any such application, you have access to many commands. The most obvious way to access these commands is through the main menu or the toolbar. We have a file menu for creating, opening, and saving notebooks. We also have toolbar buttons for creating, uh, opening, and saving notebooks. If you browse through the menu and the toolbar buttons, you can explore all the commands. One of the most useful menus is the export menu. This allows you to export your notebook to various formats, including runnable code. I'm gonna come back to this in a moment and show you an example of that. Another powerful way to access commands is through the command palette, which you can access by this toolbar button, or you can use the hotkey Control shift p The command palette gives you a single location where you can browse all possible commands. 
You can also search the command palette, find the command you are looking for. For example, in this case, I might be looking to find one of the export commands. All the common commands in DataForge Notebook have hotkeys that allow you to quickly invoke them. You can see in the command palette that the hotkeys are listed next to the commands. Hotkeys are also displayed next to menu items, and they're displayed in the tooltips for buttons. Let's have a look at a more advanced notebook. If I wanted to open a notebook I created previously, I could do so from File Open Notebook. But instead, I want to show you one of the example notebooks that comes with DataForge Notebook. So I'll use File Open Example Notebook instead. This gives us convenient access to all the example notebooks that are bundled with DataForge Notebook. Let me open a simple one so I can show you some of the types of visualization you can do with DataForge Notebook. This is the Viz Notebook. It's a demonstration of the different types of visualization you can do with the display function. As you can see, we can visualize arrays, we can visualize objects, we can visualize HTML, we can visualize uh, tabular data here, and we can render charts. DataForge Notebook has saved all the output from the previous time this notebook was evaluated. We can run it at any time though by using the Run button from the toolbar. We could also use the Run button next to the cell. When we use the Run button next to a cell, it runs the code only up until that particular cell. This allows us to run only part of a notebook, which we often end up needing to do during development and testing of a notebook. Let's have a look at a different example notebook. This is the Scraping Demo Notebook. It's a demonstration of how we do web scraping with DataForge Notebook. I want to show you this notebook so you can see how NPM modules are automatically installed for you. You can see in the first cell that we're loading an NPM library called Request Promise. Then in the second code cell, we're loading an NPM library called Cheerio. Normally with Node.js, you'd have to install these libraries manually. But with DataForge Notebook, all we do is use them and run our code. DataForge Notebook will automatically take care of installing these for us. Let's have a look at this. So you can see here that it's installing Request Promise. Now it's installing Cheerio. Finally, it's evaluating the code. You should note that NPM modules are only installed the first time that we run a particular notebook. So if I run this notebook again, all it does now is evaluate the code. It doesn't have to install the NPM modules again. When an NPM library is installed for a notebook, DataForge Notebook generates a Node.js package.json file to track the packages we have installed for our notebook. This is the standard way of tracking packages using Node.js and NPM. The last feature I want to show you is how to export a notebook. As you can see, there are quite a few options here for exporting. We can capture a notebook to a PNG or a PDF file. This can be useful for making handouts if you are having a lecture or something like that. We can also export to a web page or a markdown file. These can be useful if you want to make notebooks available on the web or, or in your blog. Finally, we can export a notebook to a single JavaScript file or a complete Node.js project. These export options are what allow you to export your code and use it on a production Node.js web server or include it in a web page. I'm going to quickly export this notebook as a web page so you can see that in action. Once the export is finished, we get this notification. I can click on this to open the export uh, directory, and then I can open the web page and view it in my browser. And here we have the exported notebook. We're almost done with this video, but what can you do if you need more help? Well, for a start, please explore the example notebooks. There's plenty of them here. Please also explore the help menu. There are loads of links here to resources on the internet that will help you. If you have joined the DataForge Notebook Early Access Program, you can get access to our Slack channel. And here you can chat with myself and other DataForge Notebook users. To get access to the Slack channel, or if you have any other questions, please email me on ashley at codecapers.com.au. Lastly, if you need to learn more about working with data in JavaScript, well, it just so happens that I've just published a book on this very subject, and it could be very useful to you. It's called Data Wrangling with JavaScript, and it's available now from Manning. Please visit datawranglingwithjavascript.com to find out more. Thanks for listening. If you're not a part of DataForge Notebook Early Access Program, please register your interest at dataforgenotebook.com.